So social media has a few advantages in that it's essentially real time and it allows us to monitor, monitor sentiment as opposed to events or uh, reporting. Natural language processing allows us to really evaluate contextually uh, you know, what is the meaning of a particular statement and um, in this case, in a great example of swine flu and travel, what does that mean? In a keyword search, uh, a search engine is going to do a great job of finding the collision there, but it's not going to understand whether you're talking about how fast swine flu is traveling through a population or whether or not it's safe to travel during an H1N1 epidemic or outbreak. Uh, you'll notice we reference swine flu a lot in this. Our initial research was done during the swine flu outbreak, which later transitioned into the h one N1 outbreak, which I think is now the novel influenza A H1 N1 outbreak. To the second power. To the second power. Uh, Twitter is of particular interest because the SMS gateway allows. Whoa, okay, I don't know what it is, but it's pretty cool. So allows posting uh, from mobile devices, which allows users to post basically during their ADLs, their activities of daily living, and it's essentially just in time blogging. You don't have to break context to make an observation as um, my family's quite annoying when I tweet about dinner during dinner <laughs> while I'm posting pictures of dinner. <laughs> so, um, but the problem with Twitter is that it's grammatically variable, it's subject to folksonomy, and um, as we've heard before, the hashtags change, the community creates this. So authenticity and verification are very touchy issues. That affects semantic and natural language processing, and uh, I'll get into some of those limitations minutes. So Twitter provides purported information. So authority and accuracy cannot be verified. Well, Twitter is addressing that and uh, quickly we're seeing more accounts become verified by Twitter. Um, that will give us a good place to start with authoritative information, but if a physician provides information, that information is uh, no less accurate but is it part of the existing authority structure? And that dovetails into a lot of the work that the CDC is doing. How do we empower communities to become part of this command, this collective command structure to feed information in and participate in that dialogue? Um, also, we've heard about the uh, humor and sarcasm. I've, I left out some of my favorite uh, tweets because I heard they were gonna use stream. This, so I'm keeping everything at least PG. Um, and we're particularly interested in assessing public uh, sentiment, and I'm particularly interested in information trending. Not accurate information, I'm interested in misinformation trending. So, uh, here are just a you know, few of our favorite uh, tweets. The, uh, the first two, though, those are pretty boring. That's just health information to save your life. The last two is where the real meat is. <laughs> Especially that second and the last one. So, natural language processing. Um, natural language processing uh, is a system uh, that's often confused with AI. NLP allows an automated system to understand the context the syntax and the semantics of a given piece of information. Now, NLM has been doing research in semantic and NLP for about 20 years now, uh, based on the Unified Medical Language System. And I know there's a couple physicians uh, in the audience, so I'm sure very familiar with, familiar with the UMLS or also the uh, MeSH terms. Those provide medical concepts and it provides the uh, context, the semantic classes, so you know that influenza is not just a condition, influenza is a disease, it's a member of another larger category, and within that category, there are other subcategories. So we use a tool called MetaMap to identify those concepts within tweets. And what MetaMap does is it identifies not only the concepts, it identifies the synonyms, or the analogs as well. Then we use a second tool called SEMREP, Semantic Representation, to identify the semantic relationships. So it searches for grammar and structure. So if someone says mask, they could be talking about an N95 mask, they could be talking about masking the symptoms, or they could be talking about masking tape, because I need to mask the wall before I paint and then put out my plastic over my windows to protect myself from H1N1. So these tools are currently available at this website, uh, skrnlmnih.gov. And when I say publicly available, I mean anybody can download them. Um, you're going to have to pretty much come back to the NLM to find anyone with the expertise to install and operate them. Uh, but that's part of what we'd like to do uh, with this series of meetings, is really create a community of engagement around these tools. 
Uh, this research has been focused on Medline abstracts, um, but now we see the potential for other uses, and we'd like to engage the, uh, the research and HIT community in that dialogue. So this, I'm going to do a very, very quick overview of the semantic Medline prototype. You probably can't see a thing. Don't worry. I can't see a thing either up here. So it's a bunch of text with something highlighted. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Alzheimer's disease that's highlighted. And what you see are the list of the top 500 uh, Medline abstracts related to Alzheimer's from uh, Medline. Now, after running these through Metamap and Semrep, we see a visualization of the semantic representation of those terms. So we see Alzheimer's in the center. We see words like cohort, depressive disorder, um, atrophy, antipsychotic agents. And they're related through colored lines that indicate the relationship. So is something a process of? Not does it cause, but is it related to the process of something else? Is it used to treat something else? Does it coexist with another condition? If we further start mining through this data, we can start to see that uh, certain genes are related to Alzheimer's, and uh, those genes are affected by certain proteins and coexist with other conditions. Basically, this system allows us to visually explore hundreds, if not thousands, of medical abstracts without reading them, because we identify and visualize the semantic terms and visualize them. So for H1N1, or in this case swine flu, we, um, well, we grabbed well over 10,000 tweets, which is about 35 seconds during the initial outbreak. But we took one hour's worth of tweets from Monday the 27th of April, we did do some pre-processing. We stripped out uh, avatars, usernames, the uh, client that they used, really left just the meat of the tweet. And then we ran it through Metamap and SEMREP. The trick was, we didn't tell Metamap or SEMREP what we were giving it. It thought we were giving it Medline plus abstracts. We gave it no folksonomy. Uh, we uh, it gave it no synonyms. And we didn't teach it how to speak like a 13-year-old in a homeroom. <laughs> and based on that initial information, uh, we defined a schema uh, for processing, and again here, we defined the schema. We had to create this set of um, classes, disease and syndromes, geographic area, we know that it's mammal, that it um, affects mammals. Um, the key to semantic and natural language processing is you still have to ask a question. The system can't read your mind. So if there are tweets coming through about a tsunami, the system is going to ignore them because we've told it to look for a disease or syndrome. Now, if there is a disease or an outbreak that is secondary to that type of natural disaster, it will start to hone in on that. But you have to ask the question. Essentially, you have to engage the NLP in dialogue as well. So our output, for example, Texas confirms third case of swine flu. We identify the geographic area. We identify quantitative concepts. So the system understands that third means the third case, the third in a series. The number of something is now three. And that number of something is a case of this influenza that's related to uh, the family suite. Um, so we took our results, filtered it through our schema. And this, these are just some of the um, results that we pulled out. So it identifies the authoritative healthcare organization, CDC. It identifies medical masks, um, devices, masks, that are part of this dialogue. Also, um, we just pulled out coughing as a sign and symptom. It starts to identify the processes. This is not causes. This is process, in this case, means related to. But it begins to find the connections that passengers, persons who are in transit, having influenza-like uh, symptoms, are a process of uh, this topic. So our next steps, um, we cheated. We gave it swine flu tweets. Now granted, when you figure that about 60% or more of those tweets were probably better suited to an episode of South Park than they were natural language processing, we had a lot of noise in there. But our next step is to just give it the entire timeline of random tweets, and we'll see if swine flu beats Ashton Kutcher. What we're also going to do is start to do some grammatical analysis. Uh, we have some interesting ideas about adverb to adjective ratios and authoritative information dissemination. Basically, authoritative groups such as the CDC are less likely to say, like, you know, swine flu is like really, really bad. Rarely. Understood. Um, and also do a little more post-processing and optimize our output for specific roles and start to work with visualizations. So our opportunities here are for biosurveillance before the fact, monitoring of sentiment, and responding to misinformation trends. So we want to know 
what the misinformation is. If everyone is saying you need to go out and buy an N95 mask, wear it in your home with your windows taped closed, we need to know that so we can feed that information to CDC, to HHS, so that they can then respond to that. And then also we're looking at tools for evaluating authenticity to find out you know, how much is Jason's tweet like the CDC tweet and basically building a semantic network. If his tweets are consistently like CDC's or HHS's or even Mayo's tweets, then he begins to move up in that um, authority structure.